All right, here's a couple of pictures of a Jim Wynn um, cast. This is the Humboldt Point that he just did a video on. He and I were talking about each doing a video independently and comparing the, our differences in techniques. I haven't watched his video yet, although I'm kind of anxious to see it. But I figured I'm going to do mine first so that we can see if there are any differences in technique. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go over a few things real quick some observations about this point. Um, I've made a couple other points like it. I haven't made one exactly like this. I don't have a cast, unfortunately, otherwise I might be able to get a better um, replica. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a percussion preform, try to get it about the right overall size and leave it about three-eighth of an inch wider than the finished product. Apparently it was fluted prior to these flakes being taken off in an oblique manner going from base to tip on both sides and then from tip to base on both sides on the other side and I noticed that a lot of these flakings are similar to Dalton flakes and other um, flaking technologies and that's the reason is if you look close here you can see we have some of the same overlap that you would find on a Dalton point similar to the, the Z flake. There's another picture here I'll show you in a second. So each of these flakes were intentionally spaced um, closer together than what we would normally do and they were most likely done on what I call the recess platform where we take a reverse up pick and then a long flake off that um, platform and then we step over we take another up pick and we use that platform to take another flake and so on and keep those spaced fairly close together. <clears throat> Whereas on the other side, it looks like he was using what I call a hook platform where he hooks onto the deltas left over from the previous set of flakes for the platform and then peel the flake off, leaving a fairly different uh, flake scar. And again, I think the flute was put in prior to removing the series flakes go over another picture. All right, now on this side it's a little bit more obvious what's going on with um, what I think are probably the hook platforms in this case from tip to base. And if you notice this side is a little bit different than the, the other side. The flakes are not as tight, not as nice, but and it doesn't have a, a big flute like the other one did either probably just a couple basal thinning flakes and then a long flute off the other side. But if you notice, on, like right here, on, on this flake, it's a good example, this cone used to go out a lot wider and there's a pretty good bulb there and about half of that cone was erased by the flake next to it. So that's another um, peculiarity that you get when you don't abrade your platforms and you're working off these special platforms is that we get stuff like that. <clears throat> so, and a lot of these go completely to the other side, other side and, and overshoot, which happens pretty often when you're using these hook platforms. So we'll probably end up getting that same effect. I'm not planning on getting an exact replica, but I do want to get a close um, flake scar pattern similar to this. I don't even know what, um, how big the point is. From what I could tell, it's about four and a half inches long, maybe an inch and a half wide. Now here's what I was talking about with uh, Dalton flaking. Similar to, to Dalton. See how these flakes are ripping out here and here. So basically what's happening is these flakes are spaced extra close together off a platform that's at an angle. And because the platform's at an angle and it's close together, it wants to go into the flake next to it, but since it has nowhere to go, it just chatters along here and tears out. And you can see here the flute um, looks like it may have even went up to here. It's hard to tell. I can't tell exactly where it, where it stopped, but either way, that's pretty long here. And if you look down here, there's an area of the guide flute on both sides, and pressure flakes have been flaked into that guide flute leaving the main flute intact with the exception of these flakes that apparently ran into it. So I'm going to flute it first and then flake it 
and we'll see if I'm right about that. And here's another interesting characteristic of using hook platform. If you notice on here there's absolutely no um, trace of any abraded edge or anything like that. In fact it looks like the flakes came off somewhere up here because the absence of a, a bulb. So the flake was taken off of the top of a previous flake from the other side and what it did is it peeled back and that's why we get these big wide um, flake scars right here is because we're peeling off from the reverse side and getting these flakes to basically peel and roll across. And then on the last picture here you see that again the edge very indicative of um, primitive flaking and almost hollow ground not quite. This side because we're going oblique rather than creating uh, a, uh, a Z flake more, uh, more of a Z flake style these oblique flakes aren't going to leave as much of a concavity as you would if we were pushing straight in and so one side is fairly convex while the other side is slightly um, hollow ground or concave on that side and um, you notice the edge is not perfectly straight either so these are some of the, um, the differences you're going to see compared to an abraded platform and a non-abraded platform and we'll go ahead and get started right now alright for our tools as you can see over here we have an assortment of hammer stones and these are most likely what they were using out here on the far west um, I also have one small antler billet in case I run into any problems and I need to get myself out of it um, using uh, using these hammer stones you can get flakes that look pretty much just like antler flakes and um, got an assortment of tines here uh, figure out which one of these ones to cooperate once we get started and a couple of aboriginal files safety glasses okay and I have selected a piece of obsidian black obsidian and I'm just gonna run through and just thin this thing out with some hammer stones real quick and get a preform and um, and then when we're done, then I'm going to pressure flake it. I'm not going to talk about the percussion part. I'm just going to get it done. I have a future video coming up pretty soon where I'll go into details on how to use hammer stones with uh, obsidian.